tell you I can still remember When I caught my first dream by An Indian called a bullet A dream it was to sight Had a 500cc motor and a good old steel bars The electrics were not crushed hard But it ran well with the car I first rode the local paddocks to get the hang of things Then ventured on to tarmac to stretch its outer wings While out one day in cruising, and cruising at its best A siren came far from behind, put a pounding in my chest I was out cruising Cruising on hot summer's day, flat out and free as the taco needle sway, side piper scraping as the tail slides through the base, my adrenaline pumping, I'm running hot with my friends, I pulled across to the roadside curb, I knew I was in trouble. The local couple wasn't afraid in the bow and had written out my summons. He asked me for my license, which of course he knew was none. Got a trip back to the local slumber and a bullet left in the sun. So now these days are gone. I have a new EFI 27 holes, by world top and a smile which lights the sky. I can press or kick the starter and it never lets me down. My good Royal Enfield Classic is by far the best in town. Ooh, I, I was out cruising. Cruising on a hot summer's day Flat out in fear As the tackle needles sway Side pipe scraping As the tails slide through the bends My adrenaline pumping I'm running hard with my friends Hi guys, today I thought I might fit my old EJK electronic jet kit to the bike and give it a run and see how it performs on the BS4. I've run this on several of the um, previous C5 I've had and it really performs well. These, It's not a replacement for your ECU, it's more of a piggyback on the um, computer side of the bike. So it really, there, it really it just adds more fuel to the bike and makes it a little bit more pleasant to ride appears to give it a little bit more power well it seems to give it a little bit more power on the lower three gears anyway so I think it's a worthwhile investment if you've got the um, earlier C5s I don't know how it's going to perform in this, this um, BS4 model but um, I'll give it a go and see what happens it's pretty easy to fit it's only just a matter of um, I just attach it up on the tank while I'm getting the um, correct tuning on it right but usually from scratch it comes in stage one so stage one means it's set up for sports exhaust and a, um, a cold air intake or, or a, um, a K&N filter I never run a K&N filter with any of these bikes because I found it's been useless or worthless to put on the bike in the first place, although I've got one. Uh, it's never been any good anyway, so I just run, it, run the bikes in standard form with a paper air filter. So, um, you know, if you want to go and spend your money and buy a K&N and run with it, you can, but I think it's a waste of a hundred bucks or close to a hundred, so that'd be something you could think about if you want to do it or not. You can buy these jetting kits on eBay or from the supplier for around about $250 US or say $350 Australian and I suppose it'd be a couple hundred pound if you go to the UK pound and um, it's just like I said, kitten thing, O2 blocker 
and uh, apart from that, I suppose it's about, I know, 20 minutes, half hour fit, so it's not really a, a big job to fit, so um, we'll swing over to the bike and I'll just show you roughly the procedure to fit it. This bike will be pretty easy, so your O2 block is just going to go straight on the end of this one to cap it off. That'll be pretty straightforward. On the previous model, C5, you'll go up in under here, and it'll be sitting up, the, up in here, and you'll pull it down from there, so it's a little bit more difficult, but it's just up in under here, and you can swing it down that way. So that's all right. Your main control unit will be probably sitting down here. I usually double tape mine and just sit it on here while it's going on and work her out from there. When you come to fitting the um, main plugs, this will be the one you'll remove here on the um, fuel injection system. So you'll remove this main plug, pull that one off, push the other plug back on. This plug here will go on to the other plug and that's a pretty simple fit. For some reason on this BS4 seems to be a little bit more room so um, inside to gather it but usually just put remove this rubber cap plastic cover it's got a press release here come in from the other side with your fingers and press the other release and then just press and push up that plug will come off and it's the same as when you come down and when you put the new plug on press down it'll snap in position so once that snaps in position you'll take the plug over push it back onto the other side so you've only got really once that's complete and you, sn you snap it across you've only got your earth wire and it'll run straight back around and connect over You'll just undo your battery and connect it up here to the negative side of your battery. So once that's done, the electronic jet system is complete and it's ready to have a test fire over. Right? This will be the, the bigger one. That'll be the one that'll be going on your fuel injector cap and this will be the other one that goes onto the smaller body. So you've only got two caps to go on your fuel injector. Like I said, the O2 sensors are very simple. There's your earth wire line there, so these are very simple to fit. The O2 block is now been pushed in, and and it's. Um, pushed in solid and I'll just tidy it up now and all will be good in this department. Unfortunately didn't have a um, black cable tie but white one will do at the moment till I find a black one so main thing is it's a bit tidy now so that'll keep it under control till I can get to the shop and get myself a black one to tie it up but the main thing is it's nice and tight. Now this was actually pretty difficult to get off the port. So the best idea would be you're trying it would be good to have some help. So when it's sitting on the port like so, just bear with me here. Wouldn't say it's easy to do this. So when it's sitting on there like so and the plastic cover comes back you've got a clip there you can press so your best bit would be if you've got a bit of help get somebody around the other side to come in through roughly in this area here with a small screwdriver press down on it to 
help release it on one side while you're back around the other side and you can press on it and then bring the screwdriver halfway along the um, plug and then gently prise it off and that way it'll come off with not as much difficulty as compared to if you try to get it yourself because it is very tight so I'd say the degree of difficulty to get this out would be about 9 out of 10 so it's in there very tight and as you can see not much room at all and it's right behind the stay the engine stay there right in that area there can't see it now because it's been removed or pulled out of the way but but if you got you can get a very fine screwdriver in there just to press on the pin to release that side can't, it's very difficult to get your fingers in there to get the release on that side so you work that way and then you're back in coming in on this way here and you can just see the base plate of the injector there and you just come down there so you've got one pin on one side flat screwdriver on this side right in the centre and press on the pin and you can just pull it off that way and it does come off quite easy if you use that system of two people working on it here it's pretty simple this female plug to the injector this male plug goes back over to the other port so can't mix this up Well, it's temporarily wired up now, so in the moment of truth, I'll turn it on. We've got the wires, the lights flashing. We'll hit the um, starter. Now we're looking for a green light. And we've got a green light. So that indicates to me that the unit hooked up correctly. JK unit mounted up here on the um, handlebars and I'll set my camera up on the gas tank this afternoon it's a bit hot at the moment and when it gets a bit late in the afternoon we'll take it for a test run and see how it performs so the camera just actually sits in this um, mounting cradle su supported by a masking, table, uh, masking tape on the gas tank a bit rough looking but it does the job so um, you know it's sort of so it's got image stabilizer in the camera still manages to bounce along there all right as for the color on this bike there's only two available at the time this gun metal gray or the or the black I didn't really go much on either color but decided to go this black because uh, this um, gunmetal grey because at a later date I might seriously spray at this Hellrot Red BMW it's an E36 BMW colour this car of mine or one of the cars I've got uh, this Mazda MX-5 factory turbo it was originally silver which I sprayed myself um, Arctic White so um, that is the uh, Hellrot Red on the red the red is the Hellrot Red this fear the bath it too I've started to spray the wheels Hellrot Red myself so um, I think I, I may go the same colour on the um, thing so later on in a few months time maybe the um, the bike might, might get a colour change and it might go red in the hill rock 
or it may go some other colour I just haven't decided yet so chances are it will go another colour so uh, that'll be another project a little bit further down the track should be a pretty easy spray I couldn't see much trouble spraying the motorbike took a hundred hours to spray that car so a bike should be pretty easy Pickup's good. Oh well, it's always good when you put something on a bike, which is meant for a um, 2017 and down to 2008. But it works on a. Um, 2018 model so it appears so far it does work on the BM4 still it's nice and smooth thought I'd come out when it's a little bit later you can see my uh, LED lights all nice and steady on the green This EJK is the uh, controller 3 so it just, like I mentioned earlier on in the videos, it just adds fuel only. The 3.5 not only adds fuel, it could subtract fuel by 10%. I wasn't really interested in doing any, taking the um, subtraction fuel job because that's where you can get into problems. So um, it was just the um, That's the idea of uh, go for the uh, mm, yeah, the, the pickup's really nice. So here we are being on the cruise. Now at the 80 kilometres an hour and you can see all my cruise lights are on now on the three greens. And you can see I was just on, as soon as I touch the throttle a little bit, you can just tell I'm at the throttle now. I just add a bit of throttle and you can tell, see, just a little touch. If I go to the full, full out throttle, it'll just turn totally red. This bike's only done a thousand kilometres now, so I'm not in the position where I can really get out there and give it a workout. But I could tell you one thing, this bike would easily do 75 mile an hour with just this sports exhaust. And now I've got the EJK on it. Very late in the afternoon here now in the Central Tablelands in New South Wales and Australia. About seven o'clock and it really is now dangerous time to be out riding a motorbike for king as it's kangaroos. And I'd say the bastards are out everywhere. In fact there they are over in the paddocks there now. Probably you can't see them on camera but there's about ten of them sitting over there. really not the place to be.
you have to be on your wits everywhere around here for them. So back to this EJK, um, I've had the power commander. It's good, but it's double the price. Actually, the power commander's a better unit than this, but it's more for the advanced riders who want to later on go for cams and valve jobs and stuff like that. This is more just for somebody who wants to just have a bit more power. And can, look at the friggin' ruse over there. <laughs> just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he yeah, just wants, wants to um, have a little bit more power. And the way you can get this is just with your flow through exhaust. And, um, geez, I don't think I'll be riding too far today, there's just too many of the bastards around. Um, yeah, just for a flow through exhaust and just this controller on it. And then after that, you pick up that bit of extra power, the bike will run well, and um, you won't need much more than that. With the commander and that, well, like I said, you can go in for more power cam, all that sort of crap, but um, you won't need any more. Like, this will easily do 75 mile an hour if you wanted to give it to it just with this mod on it alone and it'll handle it quite well so for the bit of money you pay for it you don't need any more than this when I get over here into the 60 mile hour limit and I'll put the, um, put the throttle down you'll see that the tuner turn red so that I'm giving it outright power That'll be a bit of a demo and um, you'll see it'll pick up quite well and it'll accelerate, should accelerate quite easy. There it's up on, up under the 100 now. And you can tell now it's really got a bit of power behind it and really wants to go. Yeah, and it's running a really sweet, really is good investment, just it. And you don't need a cold in it, you don't need any cane in filter or nothing, it's just really moving. And I'm just touching it too. So that just gives you a bit of an idea. Yeah, you can feel it picking up nicely. Even you, look at that, you can feel it pulling you back on the seat. Yeah, it really runs well. For 350 bucks, 100 for the exhaust. 450 Australian dollars. Really nice. So even on a BN4 200, 2018 model bike, it does work well on it. Yeah, look at the pick up. Oh. Oh, look. And gee, those brakes are good. I think I'll just turn it around and head back today because um, I think I'll get home while I can because there's just too many kangaroos on that back road where I've come along and too dangerous to drive around. These EJKs on these bikes with a flow through exhaust they are really good in the first 
three gears of accelerating. Pity about this bike, but like I said, I've only got a thousand k's on it, so there's not much I can do with it as far as hard acceleration because the bike hasn't done much work. The fourth gear pull, it's already doing 80, 90, and you're sitting on your 100 now, and it just wants to go. So even though the engineering out there in the USA doesn't um, mention this as a um, compatible for the BM4 model bike, it appears to work on it all right. I know on the um, 2017 earlier, I've added on three or four of this unit on at least three of the earlier ones, and I don't think it goes as good as what it does on this. This is only on factory default mode and it certainly runs well. This is a really quick end wheel, this one. How quick will I'd say compared to a standard one that built shit out of it? How easily it pulls this hill at 50 mile an hour. Look at all the kangaroos over there. <laughs> Fuck this in kangaroos this area. That that place on my right, there'd be about 20 of them. I wouldn't like to be coming along here in the dark. There's thousands of them per night that get knocked over here. 
in Australia anyway. Oh, well, the JK jet kit works all right on this bike. It'll be just a matter of out and test it over the next few weeks and see how it goes, see if it needs any fine tuning or something. But at the moment, on a day that bike today, it came in at around, I suppose it's still be 25 degrees. It appears to be working fine. So if you, um, don't know anything about the kits just jump onto the Davic website you can read about them there like I said they're about $225 or something like that US those that'd be 180 or so pound might be 200 pound I know they're about 350 350 um, Australian dollars and they're pretty good value for money so uh, as far as that goes compared to when you get onto a, um, a power commander or something like that they virtually double the price and you know like I said there are a fair bit of work involved fitting the command power commander and I had one once and um, you know, they're a lot more involved in the fitting and tuning and stuff like this. With these, I don't know, I suppose it took me 20 minutes, half hour to um, fit it, if that. Then you can see, I just put it on, took it straight out, ran it in the default mode. No trouble whatsoever and started first go and definitely ran a bit more, felt more powerful than what it did compared to when I um, jumped on the bike prior to it. So, um, trouble free. So if you were thinking of putting on this on any field, whether it's a B, um, BM4 model or um, 2017 model or any of the earlier models from 2009 onwards or whether it was a C5, a B5, G5, anything like that, all I'd recommend would, to put on your bike would get a um, an NGK BPR 60S spark plug would be number one choice. Two would be the, a good flow through muffler like that 21 inch early I got on this one. BJK um, fuel controller. And you wouldn't need anything else on the bike and you'd be set for a long time. And uh, 